we can start the implementation details of Bing for the streaming system. Making the jump from batch to streaming and uh, Bing streaming primitives. Again, I'm Yi and uh, from Google. And uh, before we begin, this talk goes into the specific Bing primitives for streaming pipeline and uh, how they are used. If you want to explanations as to why you would want and need these primitives and the general concept, you should uh, go back to the first talk, making the jump from batch streaming motivation concept before jumping to this content. Firstly, for the streaming pipeline, we have a source and we have some processing stage and we write to some sync. And we start from the source. How do we read the data from the streaming source? This is the implementation details of Bing's I/O connector, unbounded I/O connectors, for to read from the source. Usually, you do not need to write your own connector. You use Bing's provided I/O connector to read from source, like uh, Kafka or other message systems. But it's good to know something about it because. The source is well, the event timestamp and the watermark is assigned to the system. So the beam, um, currently the modern way to read from source is to use the splitable due funds. And the splitable due funds is a P transform that provides information to the runner about how much work there is to do and how much work already been done. So the runner can dynamically split the workloads. So to do so, the splitable due fund requires a restriction tracker that tracks the client part of the work used to distribute uh, and split works. For example, if you read from some message system and it has an offset that is monotonically increasing, the restriction tracker can track the offset that is already read and the offset has not yet been read, and um, it can claim a chunk of offset and uh, to assign to the due fund and uh, then read uh, within that chunk. And there is uh, also a watermark estimator. It estimates based on the timestamp of output record or manual modifications. We can manually assign the approximate the current watermark that is the earliest data that have not yet arrived. So this will allow for work to be rebalanced on the fly based on the long running work items and allow for the auto scaling of the system. And start with this in mind, the splitable due funds are extremely important for IO connectors and specifically streaming IO connectors. Some of the heavily used Bing IO connectors use the splitable due fund implementation in Java. The Kafka IO uh, has two implementations. One is splitable due fund and another is unbounded source. We'll go to that later. And the splitable due fund re implementation, the splitable due fund is a uh, read from Kafka due fund. It's an example of splitable due fund used in the IO connectors read. And in Python, there is an example transform periodic impulse also based on the split of due fund. And uh, this is used in some like uh, generate a uh, periodic and slowly input. Then you can pull some other source periodically. For example, watch for the file change, something like that. And the further reading is the last uh, in 2022, being submit, there was a workshop dedicated to the splitable due fund in Python, and the link for the example code is here. And another way to read from the unbounded source is called unbounded source. Bing have in Bing Java there are two type of source, bounded source and unbounded source. And this is the legacy way ready from from unbounded source, and it's Java only. In Python we already we only have splitable due fund. API. And the unbounded source, I'm still talking about it because it's still heavily used. And there is a new IO connector in the latest Bing. I think it's 2.57. Solace IO, I read from Solace message system, is based on this unbounded source. 
And uh, actually, internally, Ambani source is uh, ex executed by a splitable Dufan writer. But before the splitable Dufan existed, this was the way to read from Ambani the source in Bing. And uh, it's a reader, it uses a reader transform as a source node on the, of the job graph. And the unbounded source has a method to create a reader. It creates a reader that a runner uses to read the data from source. And the reader has two basic methods, the start and advance, to conduct the actual read. And the runner then gets the current element of handled by the reader by the get the current method. Arguably, this is an easier way to read from money source. The API arguably is easier and more straightforward that could be why it's still popular. So it's much less versatile than the splitable Dufon because it has to be a source node of job graph. And we essentially, it's not uh, convenient, if possible, to load balancing it. So it actually now it executed via a wrap of split of Dufan on the portable runners. And the some example of Bing IO using unbounded source, the JMS IO, Solus IO, and also Kafka IO has a unbounded source mode. So the in both cases, the source tracks some metrics and also for the system. The most important one is the watermark. The earliest data that uh, the approximated earliest data in event that are not yet received by the system. Remember that we must lean on heuristics to estimate the watermark and it can never be perfect that I explained in the previous talk. And optionally, there is uh, there are some other metrics that help runner to do the scaling decision. First one is get backlog bytes. If uh, it can query for the source to check how many backlogs is yet to receive, if we want uh, the latency latency to be as small as possible, we want the backlog to be small. Otherwise, we process very uh, old data, and uh, this is the source of latency. So, if the backlog bytes is large, then Bing can suggest the runner the runner can act on this situation and. Uh, ramp up the more, more workers. On the other hand, the source can report a throttling metrics. This is uh, by using metrics counter with dedicated uh, name. This functionality existed in Bing, not complete. And the incoming next release, this is going to be a more complete functionality. That is the source or any Dufan can report a throttling matrix and the runner can act on this and get a back pressure and try to scale, scale down if there are too many time wasted on the throttling. So the source tracks the watermark and also some metrics that are to help runner for the scaling decision. So the next part of the pipeline after the source is the processing stage, we usually have some user due funds and um, accept the elements, incoming elements to processing. And uh, the element means any data and uh, like incoming Kafka message or something like that. And for each element, there are some so-called metadata associated with this element. It's not uh, necessary to metadata. For example, the most important one is the key is also part of the data. But the Bing and the pipeline, we are use this metadata or and the key to decide how to process it, how to group it, and how to materialize, when to materialize it. The most important one is the key. We already mentioned the, the data, this data processing system Bing, if we trace the all the way to the 2000, it uh, can all be originated from a map reduce. And essentially, the primitive way to do is to materialize the key data, very large amount of key data. So the data of the same key will be processed in the same worker and materialized together. So key is the most important one, uh, personally, I think, in the streaming system. And also the timestamp. The timestamp of the data is the event timestamp. And the, we have a windowing 
do you find special part do your special p transform that window this data into some window we are talk about a specific window uh, later and after the window into transform applied each element is assigned to a window and uh, note that an element can be associated with multiple windows like in the case of slicing window for example and after the group by key or anything that materialize the window and firing the window and the each element we have a pen that it tracks on which time the window is filed every pen is implicitly associated with the window that said so for we first talk about the window strategies in Bing, there are three types of window mostly of course you can define your customized window and the provided window three types the first one is global window is a default if you do not use window into p transform is uh, all the element is in global window it's a large single window from unix time zero to max unix time and by default, Bing operates on the global window until um, told otherwise. And the second is interval window. There are two types of them, fixed window, fixed interval window, sliding window, we will show them later. And uh, lastly, the session windows. The fixed interval window, you can apply it in this way. Then each element, timestamp element, will be assigned to a single window that is within this time and there is no gap in windows and also no overlap between windows on the other hand the sliding windows has overlap between them and the sliding window then has two basic parameters one is the duration and another is the interval each window has a duration and between two windows the interval is not the same as the duration is essentially smaller than duration we can also see the fixed window as a special case of sliding window with, with the same duration and interval. The effect is a series of windows with some amount of overlap. So the data can exist in multiple windows. For example, if your data, the event time is here, then it be, be belongs both window one, zero and window one. Okay, um, the use case of fixed windows is for example, we want to store our incoming data. Each hour, we store it in some file. Then we group, uh, we window them into some fixed window and uh, call the write transform. And then it will write the same, the data within the same window to the same destination and a different window into different destination. We then store our data income divided by incoming timestamp by the certain interval. And a use case in the sliding window is if we want to do some offset average, like a 30 day average of stock price, something like that. And we all have each day we have one average, right? And it's the 30 days before and the second day is 30 days before they have overlap. This kind of average is ideally be treated by the sliding windows. And finally, the session window uh, is a dynamic windowing. It's essentially based on key, the key. So window events that occur with the set the length of time shorter than some timeout. This is a, a merging windows as they can grow and merge with some other windows as data is processed. So we have some data and uh, belongs to this window. If there is no such data between the minimum gap then this data belongs in two different windows. But if we have a data with the same key that arrives earlier than the assigned minimum gap duration, they will belong to the same window. This is pretty much like a session. The session has an expired time. And this session window is useful to track some discrete event, either event, but they, we want to group this event into sessions if they occur frequent enough. So after windows, then there are triggers when we materialize them or group by key 
use group by key and uh, decide uh, how when to file those windows. What is a trigger? Trigger are a mechanism that declare when output output for a given window should be materialized relative to an external signal. Triggers can also be configured to file multiple times and allow for the output for a window to be updated over time as more data comes in. This is how Bing can handle revision to data or data that comes in late. And for each time a window filed, the, a trigger is a window triggered, a pan is assigned. And the pan is pretty much an uh, integer and is increasing tracking the current materialist data belongs to which pan. When a trigger is activated, the materialized output for a given window is commonly referred as a plan. That is the more formal definition. Multiple pans can be output for a single window as processing continues. Well, trigger system arguably is one of the most confusing concepts in Bing. It's hard to handle correctly, so one needs to be careful and uh, I, one can also implement some custom trigger also. So the common types of trigger, first one is repeated update trigger. The output of a window can be repeatedly updated either with a presence of new records after some amount of processing time. Using this trigger generally requires some balance of latency and cost depending on how expensive the, the transform being calculated. And the second type is completeness triggers. And the, when the system thinks the out, output can be materialized and then it will fail and the trigger. This allows for handle the late missing or missing data. And we will have some example. This is how the completeness trigger can be written in Bing Java SDK. We have some p collection of string items and uh, doing a window. We use a fixed window of one minute duration and uh, also define how it triggers. This use a repeatedly trigger and after the watermark past the end of window and uh, it discards the filed plans, which we will come to later. There are two types of accumulation mode and uh, this this a completeness trigger when the when the watermark already passed the end of the window, we trigger it. And uh, the second one, the repeated uh, trigger, we have some we do not use a uh, we can use a global window instead of a fixed window. So the, all the data belongs to the same window. If you do not have a trigger, or if we use this one, it will no longer fail. And actually, I think it will generate an error if you write global window with this trigger. So being SDK, we uh, remind you this is wrong. If we use global windows with a repeated trigger and uh, after paying element count at least five, which means if we should receive at least five elements, then we trigger the file and send the data downstream. And uh, how to manage pans? We just uh, mentioned uh, before here, you see this discard uh, in filed pens. When you specify a trigger, you must also specify a accumulation model for the window. And what do we do with data in pens that have been emitted before? The accumulation model mode uh, is demonstrated below. Basically, a, a accumulating trigger re-emits the data that was previously emitted along with the new data. It depends on your use case, right? If your streaming pipeline, like doing some combine from some live data and the data can arrive early or arrive late. And if it arrive late, we want to revise the data uh, with the new incoming data. Then we want to choose this accumulating file the pens. Each time it triggers, it uh, emits all the data in within this window. So we can do a live revision as the window triggers. And another uh, accumulation mode is the discarding file plans. That was the example I used before. 
this is when you use the trigger as a form to materialize or to divide the data. For example, divided by every five min, at least five elements. Then you already materialized and processed the first pan. And on the second pan, you do not need the information from the first pan. Then you can use the discarding file pans. So this talk is mostly taken from this book. And also we can refer to, if you want to learn these beam primitives uh, in an interactive way, um, you can check out the beam programming guide, which, have, uh, which has a detailed discussion for this concept. Yeah, and thank you.